Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to solve rational inequalities. Okay, so first of all, what is a rational inequality? So the term rational means fraction of polynomials. So we first got to have a fraction of polynomials. So something that possibly looks like this, where the numerator is a polynomial and the denominator is a polynomial. If it had an equal sign and say zero or it was equal to some number, then that would be a rational equation. But if we take that equal sign and replace it with the inequality symbol, such as a less than or equal to or a strictly less than or greater than or equal to or strictly greater than, then this would be a rational inequality. So a rational inequality involves a fraction of polynomials and an inequality symbol. And zero doesn't have to be on the other side for starters, but we're gonna eventually wanna get zero on the other side. So instead of me listing all of the steps now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work two examples and I'm gonna go through step by step and show you how to solve rational inequality. So let's get started. Okay, for example one, we wanna solve the rational inequality five over X plus four is greater than or equal to one. And the very first step we want to do is we want to get zero on one side. So we want to get zero on one side. And once we get zero on one side, we want to write the other side as one single fraction. Okay. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take this one and we're going to move it to the other side by subtracting one from both sides. And if I subtract one from both sides, I get five over X plus four minus one greater than or equal to zero because one minus one is zero. So I got zero on one side. Now I need to write this left side as one single fraction. So in order for me to be able to combine this one with this fraction here, I need to make this have a um, denominator of X plus four so that they have the same denominator and they can be combined. Well, if I want this to have a denominator of X plus four, then what I'll need to do is multiply the top and bottom by X plus four. So when I say top and bottom, there is no top and bottom, but I can write that over one. So negative one is the same as negative one over one. If I want the denominator to have a denominator of X plus four, then I need to multiply the top and bottom by X plus four. And so this will become five over X plus four minus X plus four over X plus four greater than or equal to zero. So anytime your numerator and denominator is the same, then that fraction equals one. So this is technically still equal to one, minus one at that. So the reason I did that is so now the denominators are the same and now I can combine the two fractions. So let's combine the two fractions. And I'm writing X plus four in parentheses because of the minus in front. That minus is gonna distribute to both of these terms. So you get five minus X minus four, all over X plus four greater than or equal to zero. Combine your like terms, five minus four is one. So you get one minus X over X plus four greater than or equal to zero. So all of this is step one. So what we did was we got zero on one side by moving the one over. Then we combined these to make it one fraction. And this is the one fraction you get. So all of that is step one. So now for step two, we're gonna take what the result we got from step one, which was the one single fraction with zero on the other side. We're gonna take the numerator and we're gonna set it equal to zero because we wanna know what value will make this fraction equal zero. Well, this fraction will equal zero when the denominator is zero. So we also wanna take the denominator and set it not equal to zero. And the reason I'm setting it not equal to zero is because remember when you have a fraction, the denominator can't equal zero. So I want to figure out what X cannot be. So here, if I solve for X, I add X to both sides. I get one is equal to X or X is equal to one, however you want to say that. And here, if I solve for X, subtract four from both sides, I get X cannot equal negative four. So this is step two. Take the numerator, set it equal to zero, and take the denominator and set it not equal to zero. And these give me my points that will go on my number line. Okay, so now for step three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these values that we got in step two, x equal to one and x not equal to negative four, and we're gonna put them on our number line. So here's negative four and here's one, and then we're gonna break our number line down into disjoint intervals using those points. 
So our first interval would go from here, negative infinity, and it would stop at negative four. So now the question is, do I include negative four or do I not include negative four? Well, since X, and this is why I put not equal because that makes the denominator zero, but having the not equal lets me know that I do not include negative four. So at negative four, I'll put a parentheses. And that's because negative four will make the denominator zero, which will make our fraction undefined. So my first interval goes from negative infinity to negative four with a parentheses around negative four. My second interval is this middle interval. It will go from negative four to one. So now how do I determine whether to include one or not? So one is the number that made the numerator zero. So if I wanna know whether I wanna include that number or not, I look at the inequality in the problem. If the inequality has an equal sign with it or a line underneath, then you include that number. If it does not have a line underneath, you do not include that number. So since there's a line underneath, I'll include that number and put a bracket. So my second interval would go from negative four to one. And then my final interval would go from one to infinity. So it's that last interval. We've already decided that we include one, so we put a bracket around one. So these are your three intervals that you wanna test for the next step. So now for step four, I wanna pick a test value in each of these intervals to test to see whether we get a true or false statement. So for this interval, I need a number less than negative four. I'm gonna pick negative five. For this interval, I need a number between negative four and one, zeros in that interval, so I'm most definitely picking zero. And then for this one, I need an interval that's bigger or a number bigger than one, so I'm gonna pick two. Now I could plug these in back to the original inequality or I could plug it in to where I got the simplified inequality with one fraction on one side and zero on the other. You can plug it into either one, it doesn't matter. Me personally, I wanna plug it back in to the one, um, the result from step one where you have one fraction and zero on the other side. Again, it doesn't matter where you plug it in. So I'm using this inequality right here, one minus negative five over negative five plus four. And I want to know if that's greater than or equal to zero. One minus a negative five is six and negative five plus four is negative one. Six over negative six is negative six. And negative six is not greater than or equal to zero. So this gives me a false statement. Again, six over negative one, which is negative six. Negative six is not greater than or equal to zero. So that's false. So now I want to plug in zero. One minus zero over zero plus four. I want to know if that's greater than or equal to zero. One minus zero is one. Zero plus four is four. One fourth is greater than zero. So that gives me a true statement. And then when I plug in two, I get one minus two over two plus four. And I wanna know if that's greater than or equal to zero. So that's negative one over six and negative one six is not bigger than zero. So that's false. So the only interval that gives me a true statement is this middle interval. So that means my solution is this interval right here, negative four to one. That means I can plug in any number between negative four and one, except negative four, and it will make this inequality true. So this is how you will solve this rational inequality. Okay, let's work one more. So for example two, we wanna solve three over x minus six is less than or equal to two. So step one, what we wanna do is get zero on one side. So we're gonna subtract two from both sides and we get three over x minus six minus two is less than or equal to zero. So we got the zero on one side. The other thing we wanna do for step one is to um, combine these two to make one fraction. So in order to combine these, we have to have a common denominator. The denominator, the only denominator is x minus six. So I need to make this two, two is the same as two over one, have a denominator of x minus six. In order to do that, I'm going to multiply top and bottom of 2, 2 over 1, by x minus 6. And so that will give me 3 over x minus 6 minus 2 times x minus 6 over x minus 6. So now my denominators are the same, so now I can combine those two fractions together. So when I combine them, I get 3 minus 2 times x minus 6 
all over x minus 6. Distribute this minus 2 to simplify the numerator, and I get 3 minus 2x plus 12 all over x minus 6. And that is 0. 3 plus 12 can be combined, and that gives you 15. So I'm going to write it up here in this blank space. So I get 15 minus 2x all over x minus 6 less than or equal to 0. So this here will be my simplified fraction um, where I have one fraction on one side and 0 on the other side. So this is the result of step 1. One of the beauties about watching this on video is that you can stop it and rewind it at any moment. So if for, if for any reason I'm moving too fast, rewind it, go back and look at what I did again. Um, and again, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section below. I get notifications on my phone if I get a comment, so I will respond if you write a question. Um, that's if you're not taking my class. If you are taking my class, you can always email me and um, I'll respond. So step one, we got this as our result. For step two, what we want to do is take the numerator and set it equal to zero. So 15 minus 2x equals zero. And again, we want to take the denominator and set it not equal to zero. Alrighty, because remember the denominator of a fraction cannot be zero. And we want to solve both of these equations. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. And I added the 2x because it was a minus 2x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2. And I get x is equal to 15 over 2. So x is equal to 15 over 2 is one of our critical values that we want to use. And over here I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And we get x cannot equal to 6. So these are the two values that I need for the next step. For step 3, we want to take these values that we got in step 2 and put them on our number line. So 15 over 2 is a 7 and a half. So 6 will come first and 15 over 2 will come second. And we will break our number line into disjoint intervals. So my first interval would go from negative infinity to 6. 6x, since x cannot equal 6, I will put a parenthesis around 6. So my first interval is negative infinity to 6 with a parenthesis around 6. My second interval would go from 6 to 15 over 2. So remember, if I want to decide whether to include 15 over 2 or not, I look at the original inequality. If there's a line underneath, I include it. If there's not a line underneath, I don't include it. So since there's a line underneath, I include the 15 over 2. That's because I want to know what will actually make this equal 0, and 15 over 2 will make it equal 0 as well. So my second interval would be from 6 to 15 over 2 with a bracket around 15 over 2. And then my final interval will be from 15 over 2 to infinity. So hopefully you're getting the hang of making these intervals. And so these are my three intervals that I want to test. For the next step, I want to pick a number in each of these intervals to test. So I need a number that's less than 6. 0 is in this interval. So remember, whenever I could pick 0, I'm choosing it. This interval is from 6 to 7.5, so the best number to pick in this interval would be 7 from 7.5 to infinity. I need a number bigger than 7.5, so I'll pick 8. And again, I could plug these numbers back into the original, or I can plug them back in here. For this one, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to stick with what I did in the first example and plug them back in to the result from step 1. It might, you might look at this and say this looks a lot easier, so you can definitely plug it in there as well. So I'm plugging it in here, 15 minus 2 times 0 over 0 minus 6, and I want to know if that's less than or equal to 0. 2 times 0 is 0, 15 minus 0 is 15, 15 over negative 6. That is a negative number, which is less than 0. And so this is why I like plugging it in here, because you're comparing it to 0, versus if you plug it in here, you're going to be comparing it to a different number. So this is a true statement that gives me a true statement. If I plug in 7, I get 15 minus 2 times 7 over 7 minus 6. And I want to know if that's less than or equal to 0. 2 times 7 is 14. 15 minus 14 is 1. 
1 over 1 is 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 0? No, it's not. That gives you a false statement. I don't know if you can see that, but that's false. And then if you plug in 8, you get 15 minus 2 times 8 over 8 minus 6. You want to know if that's less than or equal to 0? 2 times 8 is 16. 15 minus 16 is negative 1. 8 minus 6 is 2. Negative 1 half is less than 0. Negative 1 half is less than 0. So this gives you a true statement. So we want the intervals that gave us true statements. This interval gave us a true statement. And so did this interval give us a true statement. So our solution is both of those intervals combined. And so you will write that as negative infinity to 6. Whenever you combine two intervals, you combine them with the u, and then 15 over 2 to infinity. So this here will be your solution to the problem. So negative infinity to 6, union 15 half to infinity. So this is how you will go through and work this rational inequality. So if you have any questions whatsoever, make sure you put them in the comment section below. Um, if this video helped you, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, you should have by now, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.